Welcome to Kingdom Reality, your gateway to deep insights into the truths and realities of God's kingdom. Dive deep into the teachings of esteemed teachers of God's Word as they illuminate the mysteries of Scripture, offering priceless wisdom and revelations. Our channel serves as a beacon of enlightenment, guiding seekers on a transformative journey towards understanding the essence of divine truth and purpose. Join us as we explore the depths of spiritual reality and embark on a quest for genuine understanding and spiritual growth, revealing kingdom realities. In the corridors of history, one woman's courage changed the fate of a nation. Who is Queen Esther? Apostle Joshua Selman unravels the story behind this iconic biblical figure. Explore the journey of a humble orphan who rose to royalty and saved her people. Discover the divine purpose and destiny that Esther embraced, inspiring generations. Step into the legacy of Queen Esther and uncover the power of purpose and bravery, revealing the strength and significance of Queen Esther's story. Unless you take over, I cannot see these things alone. Unless you take over, how can I see you on my own? Jesus, take over, take over. Jesus, take over. Unless you take over, cannot leave this life alone. Unless you take over, let it be your prayer. So take over. Unless he takes over, sing it one time. Take over, Jesus, take over. Take over, Jesus, take over. Spirit of the living God, we submit to your wisdom. 
We have come for a real encounter. We have come with hearts open. We have come because we recognize your ability to show us the truths that are contained in the word. Of Jesus, that you will transform our lives, take us to dimensions unimagined in the name of Jesus Christ. Would you do me a favor to just walk up to 10 people and tell them your life is truly about to change? Your life is truly about to change. again God bless you I truly believe with all my heart and I prayed and I asked the Lord to even honor this desire in my heart first for um, and our sisters our aunties because they they are hosting us and granting us an opportunity to experience God again and, and I pray that the blessing will start from them yeah. hallelujah Praise the Lord. So let's pay attention and trust the Lord to give us understanding. In this kingdom, we reign by light. It takes more than desire. It is our understanding, our comprehending the ways of God. This is where the victory of the believer is. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18, He says, having their understanding darkened, has been alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them. So conferences like these, much more than times where we just fellowship with one another, there are times when the Spirit of the Lord opens us up to dimensions of understanding. It matters that you not only know God, but that you understand His ways. Praise the Lord. Please listen, when it has to do with the pursuit of God, our knowledge of His person and our conformity in experience into His image and His likeness, there is no end. We will continue that system of transition through eternity. But when it has to do with your victory in this kingdom, the systems of God and the principles that make for your victory are finite. They can be learned, they can be known. They are not infinite. It is the pursuit of God, the pursuit of His person, knowing Him, the encounter that comes. It, it is from one level, one dimension to the other. But as far as your excelling in life is concerned, you can hold the keys. They are finite. Praise the Lord. Number two, it is important that we understand that the spirit of revelation um, cannot be replaced with an educated mind. Now, I don't mean this to insult our knowledge or intellectual studies, but you see, when it has to do with spiritual things, the character of God's communication is such that both the learned and the learned must equally depend on the spirit of revelation. Sometimes, um, on the strength of the things that we have and we know and the obvious results they have produced, we may not necessarily see the need to be passionate to learn. One or two things, not his presence. His presence will require that you take off your shoes, your experience and the symbol that you know him to be. He told Moses, take off your shoes. I am not one of the many gods in Egypt. I'm about to introduce myself in a new dimension. Lest you add me to the myriads of gods, take off your shoes. For where you stand is holy ground. Let me show you a scripture and then... Would we'll deal with a few things um, 
Isaiah 29 and verse 11 is a scripture that has blessed me so much and is a scripture that humbles me every time I'm about to learn at his feet. It says, and the vision, if you can see it, is projected. The vision of all is become unto you as the words of a book. Please say the words of a book. The Bible says the words of a book that is sealed. Say sealed. And then it says, which men deliver unto one that And he says, I cannot, for it is sealed. It is not closed, but it is sealed. Just because it was open does not mean the seal was broken. Next verse. And the book is delivered unto him that is not learned, saying, Read this, I pray thee. And he said, I am not learned. That means there is a realm where both the learned and the unlearned stand helpless, depending only on the Spirit of God to grant light. May this be such a meeting. In the name of Jesus. Thank you. So let's get to the word. Um, I believe that the Lord is going to really, really help us and grant us understanding. We'll start from First Chronicles chapter 12, please, and verse 32. I used to think God dwells in the realm of eternity. And for a long time, Until I understood what eternity was, then I found out that God does eternity. He dwells in a dimension that only He can define. Eternity is time. It's just that it is time that is limitless. And every time you compress God to time, you insult His sovereignty. He does not dwell in eternity. Are we together now? God is not only timeless. No. Eternity means the summation of infinite dispensations. One dispensation connecting another. But they are still time dependent. He dwells in a realm that the Bible simply describes as unapproachable light. Are we together? The Bible says in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Meaning he was in neither of them you cannot create of that system to create it are we together now yes but when it has because he constructed this dimension of his kingdom and allocated a mystery called times and seasons. Please say after me, times and seasons. Hallelujah. The Bible says he made the stars also, having made the sun and the moon. Then the Bible says he made the stars. And that the assignment of the stars, among other things, is to signify seasons. That means that they can guide our into times and seasons. So it is true that God does not dwell in time. Please listen. But he designed man and limited man to function within the circumstance of time. Are we together? That means the greatest gift man really has, second only to salvation, is time. And that if you understand times and seasons and you know how to align to the possibilities that come with times and seasons, then you can walk in victory. The Bible is very clear about the fact that all things are not possible every time. No. You may plant during the dry season as we have in our region here. You are not guaranteed to have a bumper harvest if you will have one at all. Is that true? Because there is an advantage that comes with the rainy season. It saves you the rigor of looking for water. The season was designed with that advantage in view. So if you desire a bumper harvest, your assignment is to continue to look at the weather and to find a time when your desire collides with the season that supplies an advantage. Is, is God speaking to us? Yes. 
So with minimal effort, you will plant during the rainy season. And you will find out that your crops will grow. Because part of the possibilities and the advantage that comes with that season is rain. You can outsource a system during the dry season to supply water. But it will be at a cost. That means that not all seasons carry the same possibilities. Please listen very carefully. It is important we understand this. That every time a season comes, there is always what God is doing. He is not always doing the same thing all the time. He has his emphasis. Again, we see in the Bible, Gabriel appears to people to introduce seasons. The archangel that introduces seasons... Are we together now? He comes to Daniel to introduce a new season. He comes to Mary the Virgin to announce to her that she's about to be with child and that will usher another season. Times and seasons. First Chronicles chapter 12 and verse 32. The Bible says, And the children of Issachar, which were men that had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do. It says the heads of them were 200 and all their brethren were at their command. What was their advantage? They understood the times to know what Israel ought to do. So my assignment in this conference is that by the wisdom of the Spirit to be able to guide us to know what times and that in a time like this what is the posture, what is the response what is the advantage that this season comes with for the believer are we together? let's go to the book of Esther this is where my teaching will come from we're going to be exploring the book of Esther for many years the book of Esther has been for me a very very interesting book because in this book we do not find the record of a man of God and a priest which is very strange because the character of scripture is such that regardless of the dispensation you would usually find someone who would represent the voice and the hand of God within the context of that dispensation but Esther is very strange the Bible starts by flaunting the glory of a very strange king called Ahasuerus. Please follow me. The Bible is not cheerful to show us the length and the breadth of this man's achievement, the extent of his greatness. That he was a king that exerted dominion over 127 provinces. A single man. I wonder why the Bible would take out the time and the rigor to be that detailed. It was fine enough to say there was once a great king. And this man was head of 127 provinces. That's enough. But the Bible goes on to give us meticulously. The Bible talks about his princes. And all the people that represented his cabinet. Amen. Then the scene changes. The Bible introduces a very strange woman who the Bible admits to be very beautiful, called Vashti. Please follow me. The Bible is talking to us about a woman who at that time was his bride, called Queen Vashti. And the Bible lets us know that she was a woman who was fair to look upon. I'm just taking the narrative so that we'll save time. And then at a point, it was, in those days, it was very consistent in the character of kings to organize banquets and invite neighboring princes or neighboring kings and to flaunt their glory in their presence. They would show them the spoils of war. They would show them the treasures of the palace. They would call the orators to come and, you know, just captivate the people with their skill and all of that. And on this one occasion, the king called for a banquet. And then, while the men were under the influence of the wine and the bounty of the palace, on the other side of the palace was Vashti having her own thing. She had her own cabinet too. And please follow this narrative because there are two things I'll be discussing. One today and then the other tomorrow. The next major issue the Bible discusses 
is the dishonor that a woman communicates to the king and the consequence that follows. The king calls for Vashti to come and all he wanted to do with her, can you imagine that? Was for her to just turn around and go around and tell the king's look, take a good look at this woman who is called my wife. And the moment Vashti heard that, she felt insulted and she believed she was being used and she rebelled. She sent a reply, go and tell the king, Vashti will not come. Are we together? The king is grieved, but decides to stay calm. Very good man. And then the elders come together and advise the king and say, Mr. Man, we are in trouble. It looks like you want to be passive about this issue. This woman just showed dishonor. And she is in a position where anything she does is regarded worthy of emulation. The, the effect of this that she has done is that our will begin to do likewise. Are we together? So he says, do something that will be a warning. Preserve the honor of the women in your province. By You are more interested in the continuity of your province than your personal agenda. And the king says, okay, that's all right. And they threw Vashti away. Please listen. The book of Esther is very interesting. Because the moment Vashti is banished, then the story takes another switch. That there is a man who sat at the gate called Mordecai, a Jew. Am I boring you? And then Mordecai took a lady in his custody, a village girl, to be very, very modest. And the Bible says that she had no father, no mother. Please follow me. And there is an announcement from the palace. Gather all the virgins in Shushan. The king is about to look for another wife. And Mordecai summons the courage to bring his little girl. Go and try your luck. Peradventure the king may like you. Are we together now? And the rest is history. Eventually, she becomes queen. And then, being queen, she now becomes, very strange, the only book in the Bible where the official voice of God and the advancer of God's interest was not a priest, not a prophet, not a mighty man warrior, but a woman. A woman. It was because of that woman that the Jews were preserved. It was because of that woman that Mordecai was preserved. A woman who did not use a knife and yet judge her man. A woman who did not use a knife and yet restored chaos. Please follow me. There is something powerful you will learn. Why God allowed a woman to be the real actor. The first wonder in the book of Esther was the transition of, to become the wife of kings in those days were arrogant people. They would not only say go, they would say you are not beautiful. They were, they were like gods. So what did Esther do? precious people of God that would transit this little village girl who would dare not stand close to the king's palace but now had gotten favor with the king not only to become his queen but she was willing to divide her kingdom without divorce. Divide the kingdom without divorce. Let's honor the pastor. Thank you sir. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Esther chapter 4. I'll begin to read from verse 13. And then I'll just share the principle and we'll pray. I hope we're not going to be tired of praying in this conference. 
I believe in prayer. Hmm. Please read verse 13 with me if it's projected, if you can see it and you're a Christian. One, two, read. Then Mordecai commanded to answer Esther. Uh -huh. Think not with thyself that thou shalt escape in the king's house more than all the Jews. Verse 14. For if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this... Stop, stop, stop. Don't rush. If you hold your peace, when? At... That means this season requires a response, Esther. If you respond another time, it will not produce the same effect. There is a time, Esther, and God is demand on a response. The letter and the threat of Haman. I hope you understand the vendetta between Haman and Mordecai. That Mordecai would not bow as a Jew. And Haman said, no, I need absolute loyalty. This man is a threat to the position, my exalted position. And not only Mordecai, he wanted to annihilate every Jew. Are we together? And Mordecai now sent word to Esther. And Esther wanted to the mistake of Vashti. Because let me confess, the palace can disconnect you with the pain of where you came from. To the point that you may not remember that once upon a time you were in a position that now exalted God desires that you go back. The palace can so fade the scars of your pain. You will forget you were once at the backside. And so Esther was saying, look, this is not an issue of urgency. I'm queen, lead me. And Mordecai said, go and tell her, don't you forget that you are also a Jew. They may start with us, but they will not end with us. Are we together now? Verse 14. For if thou altogether holdest thy peace, when? At this time. I told you about times and seasons. That every time and every season requires a response. And then it says, there, Then there shall be enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. But thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. Now here's the point. Please, every woman of God here, read with me the last, um, what now? The clause, one to go. And who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this? Please sit. God bless you. Who knoweth whether thou hast come to this kingdom for such a time as this. Hallelujah. Vashti is banished and there is a vacancy. And you know, God is totally not interested in anything that he cannot find a window for me to advance his kingdom. Please listen. When you study the Bible, historically, many other things happened concurrently with the things written in the Bible that were worthy of being recorded. Some of them were recorded, but they were never captured in Scripture. Everything captured in Scripture were captured with respect to their contribution to kingdom advance. If God could not find a space in that story where Christ will be revealed, it was useless. In God's economy, whatever promotes Christ is what he's interested in. It doesn't matter how popular, if Christ cannot find a space for himself in any story, in any life, in any situation, it is not worth his participation. For a long time, the issue of the palace was not a concern to God. Because everybody there did not give him space. God began to be interested in the palace when there was vacancy. Because his desire was to find a way to bring the Jews out of captivity. There were people who had hopped from one level of captivity to the other. Notice that the name God was never mentioned until Esther showed up. There was nothing in that palace that seemed to honor God. And so God too was inert and silent. But the moment he found a vacancy, he started saying, now my interest can be promoted. 
And then a little girl gets to the palace and God says, finally, I've gotten someone who can represent my purposes. And through that one woman, not a prophet, not a king, not a priest, the only book, like I said, where a woman played the role of both the prophetic, the apostolic, without no ordination from anyone, she became the voice of God within that land. There are two keys that we will learn from the entire book of Esther. I studied very carefully the spiritual tools that Esther used, both for her exaltation and the preservation of God's people. And surprisingly, I thought I would find so many keys. I was shocked to find only two. And this is what we are going to be discussing. And that whoever will align to possess these keys in this season will inevitably reproduce Esther's dimension of results. Uniqueness and a man's usefulness. The rewarding, the discerning of a man's usefulness. The usefulness of a person could be an object is called honor. Easy to discern. This is a phone. The ability to discern the usefulness of this phone and the ability to not take it for granted. I cannot act like my life with my phone and my life outside my phone is the same. That is honor. I must acknowledge the role and the ease that this gadget, as small as it is, contributes to the improvement of my life. It can help my efficiency. Is that true? Now listen please. This honor, therefore, is the trivializing of a man's usefulness. This honor is the trivializing of the contribution of a person or an object in your life. I show you why many people continue to fail. Hmm. Honor. This is one of the most powerful spiritual mysteries that the Lord taught me outside of the law of encounter. I thank God for the privilege and the access He's, grant, he's granted me to um, the revelatory dimensions of God. But I submit to you that if you master honor, there is no power in existence that sustains the ability to clamp you down in one position. You will live your life as if Satan does not exist. It's called honor. Please pay attention. I show you why great people do not necessarily rise to the position that befits their sacrifice. They have knowledge. They have skill. They even have God. But they have trivialized the excellency. Honor is not a ladder. It's a lift. It can turn your life around in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. Please listen to me. In this kingdom, who hates you does not matter, but who likes you matters. <laughs> Please away with that theology that it doesn't matter. Um, I, I don't need men. If you are saying that with respect to God's sovereign power, you are right. But if you are saying that with respect to trivializing the usefulness of men, Sit back, relax, and experience the shock that your ignorance will produce. The episodes of pain that will come as a result of ignorance. To the point that the psalmist says, what is man? Lord, you have options. There are too many things to think about in the throne. But in the midst of the worship, he thinks of man. To the point that he's not ashamed to chase man. He is, he, he, he. He's unashamed to make his vulnerability. I mean, he shows us how vulnerable and soft-spotted he is. How dare you trivialize man? What is man that thou art mindful of? Nor the son of man that thou visitest him. Please learn this and learn it forever. All blessings come from God through men to you. No blessing comes from God to you. It looks like it came from God to you. Even Jesus came from God through men to men. 
All destructions come from Satan through men to men. And all blessings with no exception whatsoever. If it looked like you had an encounter with God, interfacing you and God was an intercessor somewhere just because you could not see the person. Anna the prophetess was in the temple for 60 years praying down Jesus. It was not just Mary and Angel Gabriel. There was a man in between. Please learn this. I want you to leave this conference with something you know that you can activate right here and now and it can turn your life around. Are we together? All blessings come from God through men to men. It is possible for God to say yes and a man says no. The answer in your life will be no. Hmm. Believers, please listen. Please listen. David is in the wilderness seeing visions of himself being king. God rejects Saul as king. A man comes in between, calls Samuel and says, Lord, I refuse. And David is paying the price. God already had told him, Mr. Man, you are next king. A prophet stands in between and says, God, I have not allowed this. And David's destiny is in the balance, waiting for the approval of, not God, a man. And God himself, knowing the immutability of the systems he built, had to come to the man to negotiate. He said, look, Samuel, let's not drag this. How long shall you weep, seeing that I've rejected Saul as king? Don't delay. Listen, listen. Don't delay another man's destiny. Pick up your horn. Go to the house of Jesse. Couldn't God bypass Samuel? What was the big deal in Samuel? Says an ignorant Christian. Was it not because they met Samuel that the donkey returned back home? Restoration is true. My question is under what condition? Every possibility in the kingdom is governed by spiritual conditions that make them real in your life. Just because they are true based on God's verdict does not mean they will manifest. Is God helping us this morning? Praise the Lord. Oh, I will. I will. The goal is knowledge. Please listen very carefully. I'm showing you and I hope for some of you I'm changing your perspectives that your answer the answer to the many prayers continues to move around you and is within your circumference. It is the intelligence to understand how to attract that answer to you that the missing link is not your prayer, maybe. The missing link may not even be on godliness. That there is a spiritual weapon that can transit men from where the backside rides to the throne. I know you know favor, but leave favor. We will discuss it. The mother that gives birth to favor is called honor. Until honor is pregnant, there is no child called favor. If honor is barren, you are in trouble. You will never, never. Your first assignment is to pray that honor can take in. When honor takes in, begin to rejoice. Because a child is coming. And the name of that child is favor. I cannot know you by myself. Unless you take over. We cannot see this on our own. Jesus, take over. We cannot learn this by ourselves. Unless you take over. Listen, please sit down. Let me tell you this. There are many families here that have the privilege of leverage from the credibility and the integrity of their parents. And may God bless you, maximize it. But I'm sure without contradiction that there are a few of us here that the only ladder you will have in your life is the ladder that is built through this understanding. Otherwise you will remain at the backside of Shushan forever. 
Please hear me. Your growth and your lifting is not just dependent on the will of God. His will for you is clear. It's not a mystery. I know the thoughts that I think towards you. 29 and verse 11, Jeremiah. saith the Lord. They are thoughts of good, peace, and not of evil to bring you a future and an expected end. Are we together? Yes. It is not, it is not, we are not in the dark as to God's desire for us to rise to the top. Because he said in John 15 and verse 8, he said, Herein is my Father glorified. Let me show you how the Father takes glory. He says, When you bear much fruit, so then shall ye be my disciples. Let me interpret that for you. It means in your bearing much fruit, you validate that I mentored you well. Your not bearing fruit is an indictment on my mentorship, God says. Let it not be that I did not show you the systems of the kingdom. So when you produce result, Jesus comes to a tree and finds that tree with green leaves and then no fruit and he curses the tree. He doesn't ask Satan, help me and curse this tree. By himself, the same anointing you want was used to curse the tree. And in 24 hours, the tree went down. Notice how sad Jesus results. He saw fruitlessness. It's God to someone this morning. Honor is the reason why you will live where you are to the next level or is the reason why you may remain where you are in spite of the fasting, in spite of the prayer. I came from a background that did not provide an advantage by default and I knew that if I didn't learn this I would continue to propose things I would never see in my life it is painful to propose things that your life cannot capture there is no ladder there is no dimension the next time you are writing streams of income, write honor. When you write real estate, write honor. You can earn a living practicing honor. Please understand what I'm telling you. This is very powerful. Very powerful. Especially, let me say this respectfully, our generation of young people, we don't understand honor at all. Is the reason why we, life continues to be hard. Because transgression is a mother. When she gives birth, the name of her child is hardship. Hardship has a science to it. Proverbs 13 and verse 15. The Bible says, Good understanding procureth favor. It says, But the way of transgressors is hard. A transgressor is not an unbeliever. A transgressor is a violator of God's system. I came truly to charge our hearts so that we will have results that bring glory to the name of the Lord. There are many skillful people in this land, in this city, around this nation, and they continue to wonder why they never rise. Some music ministers, some men of God, some women of God, some career people. Please listen very carefully. People continue to have visions and visions of growth in ministry and they wonder why, in spite of all the machineries that they put in place, they add every other thing to the ingredient except honor. What everything in the palace minus honor produced. The king is still on his throne. His servants still loyal to him. The chariot still in place. The treasure house still full of gold. And honor is extracted from a palace for one day and the palace is almost in trouble. Think what has been happening in your life. Everything minus honor. Degree minus honor. Prayer minus honor. Is God speaking to us? Honor is the discerning, the celebrating, and if need be the rewarding of a person, of a system, let me submit to you that the only reason why we have failed in life is not so much about Satan. 
it is dishonor. Dishonor to God, dishonor to men, dishonor to principles. Dishonor to God, dishonor to men, dishonor to principles. Take Satan out of this world, men will continue suffering. They will not even know he has left. That's when you will know what parts of our lives have nothing to do with him. Dishonor to God, dishonor to men, dishonor to principles. In heaven where the devil is not, angels don't just enter the throne room. Satan is not there. Evil is not there. Yet you don't jump in and out of the throne room. There are doors. There is order in heaven. Hallelujah. When you trivialize the usefulness of God in your life, please listen. When, you tr when God becomes like one of the many important things, you just classify him as number 13 in the list. So you are in my heart, oh God. The jealousy of God was designed to fight everything till he is number one. Even if he gave it to you. It's amazing that God can fight something he once gave you. Read the Bible and see God giving people thrones and fighting it again. The moment he cannot find his place exalted. The moment you add many things to God and say, Lord, you are important, but not the only important thing. This dishonor has translated to marriages. You are my wife. What is there? Are we not married? What part of the ring can't you see? You see that? Dishonor. Dishonor. Communicated in the pungency of our words. Communicated in the sarcasm, the body languages that are communicated. When we see great people, we so trivialize them. What is it about this artist? Is it just because God gave the person a good voice? What is there? If I train my little voice, won't I be there? You see, that attitude alone, you don't know you are programming a climate of hardship. Let me tell you why many Nigerians continue to go through pain. We are embarrassed to acknowledge great things. When we see greatness, we act as if we are blind towards it. Someone can come into this beautiful church right now and see our mothers and our sisters and say, so what is, what is so special about the conference? What is in, I started organizing conferences since I was small. That's why you are where you are. You, you see this kind of attitude. Please learn this. There are many young, arrogant preachers that would enter and see men of God, people, seasoned people who have been used by God and just look and wonder, okay, so what is he saying? Let me see if I can get one or two things. I hear they say he's a nice man of God. You, you see, let me tell you this, my brothers and my sisters. There are battles you cannot fight. The fact that you want to fight it is proof that your life is under an attack because there are battles in this life that you should never try to fight. Are we together? Oh no. I preached a message seven years ago that became a blessing to the body of Christ and I'm honored to be to have been used by God. It's called commanding results. It was a vision. Please listen. It was a vision that I had, a revelation, as to why people's lives never move. And I said, Lord, there has to be a way. Should I fail simply because of my background? Was it my fault? You are born looking like your parents, but you die looking like your knowledge and decisions. It's true. It's true. Someone has to be tired this morning. And say, no, it can't be like this again. Someone you have dishonored, something you have dishonored has authorized your hardship. Listen to me very carefully. A mother with eight children and all of them responsible children and you say she's just lucky. Let her leave the children to go abroad and see. You see that dishonor? You have one child, you are almost having BP. And a woman had eight children. And as a widow, took care of them. Every time you see consistent results, it's no longer guesswork. There is a grace. 
you cannot be exceptional indefinitely by your strength. It's proof that another system has lifted you. And any wise person will discern that behind these results, there is a grace. I can tell you the key to close doors, dishonor. You don't need to ask the door to close. Just practice dishonor and watch the doors shut on their own. Every door that opens, opens to honor. Every door that is shut. The door of the palace, in spite of the chains, she did not have a key, but honor took her to the palace. She bypassed the protocol. Let, let her dasa had she tried to access the king on her own, even Mordecai could not cross the gate. But a villager's honor takes her right to the palace. Someone is rising. In the name of Jesus. That means the lack of job was not really about the job. It was something about your dishonor. When you trivialize a man's usefulness in your life, then you are brought into a system where you are forced to recognize that men can be very useful in the rising of men. Praise the Lord. I've had the privilege to meet very good people and I've made it as a culture, as a person, to never trivialize greatness when I see it. It takes a lot of humility. Honor many times will sting your ego. But the lift and the dimension it will take you is worth that price. Please listen to me. Listen to me. The first key we see in the book of Esther that was responsible for this effortless transition. In fact, the first key that we see. Notice that Vashti did not just backslide down from the palace. She left immediately. Have you been touched by the message you just heard and you want to give your life to Jesus or you want to rededicate your life to Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Then say this short prayer. Lord, I admit I am a sinner. I need and want your forgiveness. I accept your death as the penalty for my sin and recognize that your mercy and grace is a gift you offer to me because of your great love, not based on anything I have done. Cleanse me and make me your child. Be faithy receive you into my heart as the Son of God and as Savior and Lord of my life. From now on, help me live for you, with you in control. Dot in your precious name. Amen. Congratulations to you. If you have just said that prayer, you are now a child of God. Look around you for a Bible-believing church and also ask Jesus to direct you to the church where you can continue to serve Him. Consider subscribing to this channel too, so that you'll keep learning the realities of God's kingdom. God bless you.